Hey, Dave, I'm just curious, are you going to show us what, uh, how to do one of your magical composites that you do or regular editing of some sort? Just yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to add a floor to that picture that I just had up and uh, some other stuff. So sure, actually anything you want. And cool. I like your composites. I'd love to see how to do that. And mine sucks. So <laughs> need all the help I can get. Gary, you can't hear me. That's weird. Uh, I'm reading a text thing. Um, because I'm not on mute. Okay, I want to make sure I was recording this. Pause or stop recording. Oh, that must mean I'm recording. Okay. I'll go back to sharing the screen and uh, do a little, uh, little playing here. Actually, I just edited this one, but I'm going to do it again because it was fun. <laughs> At least I know how it's going to work. Okay, I get rid of some junk here. Made her just a little bit taller. I always make them just a little bit taller. Nobody ever, no, no models ever said, can you make me look shorter? And see the the roughness of the skin there, you know what everybody else has, like scars and blemishes and stuff. I use uh, Imaginomics portraiture to pretty much do most of the work for me. All right, now look at the skin. Okay, here's a, here's a before, after. Before, after. Now, not everything, I see it made her hair change too because it's, it's a flesh tone-ish color. So I'm gonna mask that out. It's, I have portraiture, make me two copies so I can do that. So I'll mask out her hair that's so it, uh, oh, I'll just set the zoom here. I'll mask out the hair that's so it's back to normal. And let's see, I'm gonna mask the nylons too because I like the detail in those. And the shoes. All right. I'm going to do frequency separation here and do any other kind of little blemish fixes I need to do. All right, getting used to using this knob here. It may not look like I'm getting used to it, but I am. Okay. You might not be able to see what I'm doing here. Um, I don't know that the resolution on Zoom shows the 
shows a fine detail, but when there's a little scar or a blemish, I can take this part of the skin, the texture, and put it over that part, and it fixes it. And that's how everyone is perfect in pictures. See a little spot there? Okay, I can pick that and say, cover that spot. It does. All right, she's looking good. All right, I'm gonna flatten the layers out here and we'll do some dodge and burn. A dodge and burn lets me make lighter areas lighter and darker areas darker and actually give her more shape. Okay, and that's what I'm gonna do here. Again, it may not look like I'm doing anything, but I'm doing a lot. I'll show you the, the before and after here in a sec. You see the difference. Very different. And watch how I can make her leg not look nearly as flat. And especially down here on the nylons. Love dark nylons. It's when a model says, what do you want me to bring? I always say, bring some sheer nylons. If they got them, they'll always look good. Okay. Now let me let me zoom out here and you can see the see the difference here. There she is without the change. There she is with. See how she lights up and changes shape? Especially look down in here by her leg. And we can do the same thing with uh, burn. We can darken some areas. So I will do that. That again changes the uh, her shape. And dodging and burning is probably the closest thing to actually being artistic that you can get when you're editing because you're actually figuring out what you want to draw and where. And it takes a little while to get used to it. I like to darken around the face because it makes the face stand out. It usually makes roots not show up either as much. And of course, no one ever complains about that. All right, this is pretty cool. Um, now we have some uh, some garbage here on, on the side. Let me zoom out and I'll show you how to get rid of that. It's pretty, uh, pretty simple. Um, I'm going to use the, something called a mixer brush. And I'm going to tell it I want this color. Okay. And then I'm going to come down here. And just, <clears throat> oops, I need to flatten here. There we go. Put this color here. See the smudge right there? 
probably wiggle right there. Smudge goes away. That's good. I pretty much took care of it. Now, if I want to have a tile floor under her, let's do that. That'll be fun to do. Put a dirty tile floor under her. Not really dirty so much, but um, now that's at the wrong angle. Okay, you see that's not gonna that's not gonna work. So you just grab it here and you move it until it's about the angle that it should be for under, under her chair there. And uh, we're set. I'm gonna say okay to that. Now I'm gonna put her layer above the floor layer. Okay, if I take her out, there's the floor. And I'm gonna mask this but I'm not gonna mask, most of the time you either mask with, with white or black. See, if you mask with black, it brings it in all the way like that. And I don't want that. Um, white takes it away completely. So I'm gonna go with a light gray. Now there's a lot of reasons for that. Uh, for me, see the shadows on the floor? I wanna keep the shadows on the floor, on the new floor. So here we go. It's gonna be this easy. Um, there we go, brush size. All right. I'm just painting places that aren't her, pretty much. I don't have to be really super good at it either, super detailed, because it's only doing about halfway, is what I want. All right. So far, so good. Now I'm going to go to white, and I'm going to take out this over low that I put in at the top and I'm going to zoom in on her legs, the chair and her. And uh, quite simply, I'm going to paint in the other direction. Now, if I'm painting with white, it brings back the, uh, the foreground, uh, the top layer. I remember it's if you paint with white, it's like spackling a hole in the wall. If you uh, paint with black, it's like drilling a hole to the next layer. Hey, somebody's playing music. All right, by doing this, I'm I'm making it this so. Uh, there's no floor showing up on the legs. It's a little time consuming, but um, if you look down the bottom here, you notice that these, these shadows that I wanted to keep are still there. And that's, that's what I wanted. And uh, oops, my backgrounds are usually uh, less detailed and they don't take away from the picture uh, I don't. I don't want to take away from the picture of the of the model themselves. So, so you go. Added a floor. What do you think? Does that work? It looked like a floor. So, Dave. 
Yeah. Uh, if you don't mind me asking, um, how would you do this in an environment where you want to do a composite, but maybe the background isn't a beautiful gray, flat color like you had initially? Because I could totally see how using gray on, on this to composite, it works really well. Um, but for me, like I do cosplay photography outside somewhere, mm -hmm. uh, I need to get rid of trees and floor and junk and stuff. I don't, would, it doesn't seem like gray would work there, although I like the idea of using that to bring in the light. Yeah, there you would probably cut out the person and put them in whatever background you want. Um, the only time I've, uh, um, though, well, there's a few times that I've done outside stuff. I've done it at the creek, for instance. I uh, have a girl in the creek, and there's a little waterfall behind her, and the whole works and just above the waterfall is a lot of dead wood, you know, just logs and stuff laying there that are terrible. So I actually, um, because she's not there, it's easy for me to take a jungle and just uh, swipe a couple of times and uh, I got a jungle in the background instead of the <laughs> logs. So that works out. Um, uh, if you've got a lot of detail in the background, it's difficult to get rid of it. Sometimes that detail can blend in with a new background just fine. Um, and you can actually use a gray and leave both of them in there, especially if it's, you know, if it's, uh, uh, if it's cosplay and there's some uh, um, gunplay or smoke in the background or whatever, you can fade it all out. But um, yeah, do you normally use the thing where you, you uh, select subject? Uh, since they invented it, yeah, I have been. It's pretty fantastic. Yeah, yeah, it works really. It saves a lot of time. I've actually used it too. One of the things that I found that's really handy is you can take, um, make a copy of, of the original first. So you've got the whole thing and then do a select of that just so you can get the, the person. And mm -hmm. so sometimes it'll miss a little hair or a finger or something like that. Then you can use that other copy to bring that back in if you need to. Um, but, uh, um, uh, that's that's the best way to do it. But yeah, if, if you're doing cosplay, your, your best bet is say, see that wall over there? Go stand in front of that wall. Right. <laughs> Comic, Comic Con is like not the place you'd want to go to take pictures for, to, to then turn around and, and put them in something um, with all the little kids carrying their bags of uh, <laughs> Everybody's got a badge on, it's always bad. That too. I mean, even then you have to take the badge off the one you're shooting. But um, yeah, like now if I wanted to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to flatten this. Um, Got to do layer to do that. Um, you know, if I wanted to put some other kind of background behind her, again, it's, it's helpful if it's gray. What you could do is, um, I would first cut the person out and put them on a gray background. And, and I mean, it depends on how complicated the picture is. That way you can clean that up um, and then, uh, then turn around and put your background in and paint it in the way you want. So a lot of times if I'm doing uh, um, steampunk stuff, I'll have uh, you know a ship over here, and then I've got something up here in the sky. So I'm not I'm not uh, bringing a background in. I'm I'm bringing in clouds and balloons and all kinds of other stuff. Um, does that make sense? Do you you kind of do that too? Yeah, that's that's kind of what I've been looking for is, is trying to find a way to make it work well in both uh, in both contexts. But I have been doing the double layer and masking trick like you've been talking about. Um, I haven't tried putting her on a gray background first and then doing that. That's actually a really good idea. I'll give that a shot for my next composite. Yeah, well, if you're cutting her out in the first place, you can just paste her into a gray and then work from there or right. a white or a black or whatever. Black is the hardest one because then parts of her will fade into it and, um, and, and then you can't get, it, get her back out again. And you don't wanna do that or him. Um, okay, so let's see. Yeah, I put a background in and I put it behind her, that one. So we're gonna make this one all mysteriously looking. 
I'm going to even use a lighter gray because I really don't really care much about the background, but it's going to change the mood completely. Well, maybe not so much at that gray. The coolest part though is on some things, like if this is a cloud or something, I could, I could let a lot of it fall on her and get away with it because there's a reflection off the wall would normally hit her. This is why I don't usually cut the people out. And um, and paste them somewhere else because if I can paint in the background, I can let some of it get on them and they look like they actually belong there. I'm gonna get a little darker, but I'm just gonna go on the outside edges and not close to her. There we go. See, change the mood a little bit. Yeah, I could, um, problem is all the pictures that I've taken um, with a lot of stuff in the background would probably be location and just, and just finding one that's not, uh, doesn't have nudes in it might be difficult. <laughs> Sorry. Um, maybe next time I'll, uh, I'll, I do this every, every other week now and, uh, Next time I'll try and make it a point to do something that has uh, um, that has a lot more detail in the background and get rid of it. But yeah, I've been known to actually just blur it. You know, use the mixer brush and blur it all out. Um, and uh, that sometimes that works, depends on how, how detailed it is. Does that make sense? Yeah, looking forward to that. Okay. Or let me know. We can get together on on uh, just a one on one and and poke with it. Be fun playing. Cool. Thank you. All right. Love Taylor. She's not really modeling much anymore. Gonna make a copy, and then I'm gonna blow up her hair because that's what I do. So is that the only thing that you've uh, struggled with a little bit? Oh, the list is too long for things I've struggled with. I'm sorry, what? The list is too long for things I've struggled with. <laughs> <laughs> you mean we'd be here all night? Yeah, pretty much. Not good yeah. for anybody. Yeah, we'll have a little bit. Wow. <laughs> hey, Dave. Yeah. Uh, Caesar here. I'm a big fan of your work. Oh, thanks. Um, so yeah, from what I can see, you do a really good job from the photo itself. Uh, I can tell the lightning right there is really, really good. Um, do you usually, uh, shoot with two lights, two strobes? Yeah. Let me, uh, I'm sure I have something that shows the strobes in it. Yeah. Two lights. The, the thing is the modifier is the thing that's the, the toughest thing. Yeah. I don't have one I don't think that shows all of it. This is only only a foot wide. Okay, this strip box here. And I use grids. That gives me, that's a white background. So you can see that using grids means I can make that whatever shade gray I want because the light's not shining on it. It's just reflection. And I have two of these. Um, and let's see, for her, I think I only have one 
No, I've got another one going on back here because you see the rim on the cross arm there? Yeah. Yeah, so there's another one back here too. I usually have two. These right here are the most important things I have in my studio. Those are wheels on the bottom of my light stands because I move my lights at least every 10 shots. I'll take 10 shots and go, okay, let's try something different. Or I'll move it a little further back or a little bit further forward. Um, but you'll also notice that the light is actually behind her, not in front of her. Um, Correct. Yeah, the separation is really, really good. Yeah, thanks. It's, I, I, uh, I rarely have the lights actually in front of the model unless I'm doing beauty shots. Um, uh, otherwise, uh, getting abs to show up and shapes and everything, oh, it's so much better with, with light from, from the sides. Let's see if there's anything else in here. I mean, sometimes it's light from straight above. No, I don't see it showing the lights anywhere else. Yeah, but you can easily tell you are shooting with two lights on both sides, mm -hmm. especially, you yeah, know. especially from the side. Um, yeah. What I really, what I really like about you is the way um, you make their skin pop up, and also the colors of uh, pretty much everything: their dresses, uh, their hair. Uh, so I think you do really, uh, you do a really good job over there. Uh, that's something I'm really interested in, like seeing how you achieve it, uh, okay. because I'm pretty sure it's not most, it's not done by uh, Dodge and Barm. Uh, though it helps a lot. But uh, I guess it has to do a lot with the picture itself, uh, taking at the very beginning. Well, there's there's one thing here that, do you use Lightroom? Uh, I use Photoshop mostly, just because it's got raw on it, camera raw, so. Um, yeah, uh, basically, um, Adobe uses the same programs for everything. Uh, Lightroom is really just uh, raw with a uh, fancy front end on it. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, there, there's that. But, okay, like this, for instance, uh, well, that's not even as dark as I usually get. Let me see if I can find a, a my, oh, there we go, much darker ones. Um, she doesn't do nudes, so there shouldn't be any. Okay, one of the first things I do, which actually is a lot to do with my style is I'll play around with a shadow slider. And a lot of times I'll crank it all the way up. Okay. Um, if I turn up exposure here, you'll see more of what it does. Okay, look down in here. You can see that what is just black, I can now see the detail. Mm -hmm. uh, it almost gives it a comic book look. Um, and if, if, if I have to, if something's really bright and I have to turn it down, I'll actually crank the highlights down a little bit to take the, um, to take the light down so I can get the shadows in because I, I really need those shadows. I mean, that's how that picture was originally when I took it is just like that. So just brightening it up, isn't going to bring the shadows back, um, and there it does. And a lot of times that brings the detail out in the hair, which wasn't there before. I mean, it may be in this one, but it brings out more of the hair, especially if they're a brunette, you can actually bring out the curls and everything by doing that. So I do that a lot. Um, I actually start every, uh, everything I work with, I start by adjusting it a little bit in um, <coughs> Lightroom first. I like here, for instance. Um, brighten it up a little bit. And then if I bring the shadows up, see how we can now see your stockings um, by turning the shadows up. Now, if I was any good, I would have lit her up right in the first place. But, you know, like I said, I don't use very many lights, just a couple usually. Um, oh, and, uh, and the one we're working on here, it's still two lights right, right across her. The thing is, I push one back and I pull one forward. 
So that's why she's like facing one of the lights and the other uh -huh. one behind her. So, so that gives you that look. So okay. I'll work on this one so you can see the, the skin and all that. I always make my models just a little taller. They never complain. It might make their head a little bit bigger, but eh, some of them have a big head anyway. Okay. So there's the difference between, that's what I pulled in, that's what I'm gonna work with. Okay, so I'm gonna flatten this. And let's see. Um, Now I, I use some, um, I'm gonna save this just in, just in case. So the one time you don't want it to crash, it crashes. So I'm sure everyone on here has, uh, has experienced that. So I use portraiture, tell it to do it in a different layer. And I'm only set on medium here. I'm gonna say, okay. Somebody's using a cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's a here's a difference in your skin. Do you, do you use that filter, the Imaginomic filter? No, I've never used it before. Ah, well, it's expensive, but it's worth every dime, and it's the only filter I use. Okay, can, can, I, can can you do the before and after to see how it looks again? Yep, yep. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more so you can see it. Okay, that's her uh, after and that's before. Look at the difference. See the difference there? To be honest, over the cell phone does not show that much big of a difference. All right, <clears throat> now let me zoom in even more here. What is it doing? Is it, oh, her skin is. It's, it's the skin, yeah. <clears throat> okay, yeah, now I can see it. Yeah. See, so it's, it's taken a little detail away, uh, but there's still texture. I mean, there's still enough texture there that somebody doesn't go, oh, you smoothed it all out. Smoothing um, the lightning too. Yeah, it changes a little. Yeah, and of course you can adjust all of that as far as what, what you do. Now, because it goes for things that are skin tone, by the way, if you run this filter on a black and white, it doesn't do anything because it's looking for skin tone. So. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, if, unless you have brown eyes, it doesn't change it. But it changed her hair because her hair is, is you know, um, the the reddish skin tone. So, so that's why I have it do two layers. That so I can go to the mask top level out. and mm -hmm. mask it out. Now, if I I like her hair smoother or less detailed, but still. Um, uh, I keep, I keep pushing buttons that aren't doing anything. Okay. Okay, so I can bring her hair back in by just painting it in. And lips and eyes, anything that I okay. want to bring back. And she's wearing a blue dress, so that didn't affect the dress at all. But basically it smoothed her legs out and everything for me. So it did most of the, the skin softening for me. Um, I almost got carpal tunnel when I first started um, by doing all the editing on all the skin all the way around and it would take me an hour. I'm going, no, this is just wrong. So um, I have frequency separation, uh, a uh, action for that, um, but I don't think I'll need that with her uh, right now. So I'm just gonna do dodge and burn. I use two different layers. Um, hey Dave? Yeah. Sorry. I, I I was actually curious about this because I know you've talked about portraiture a lot. In fact, I bought it on your recommendation. I love it. Um, why would you use portraiture and frequency separation? Do you find a difference between the two? Or how do you use frequency separation? I guess maybe is a better question. If you already have portraiture, I mean, they feel redundant. It depends on how, um, how many times the model's fallen out of a moving car. <laughs> it depends on how much stuff I have to fix. Um, okay. You know, um, portraiture doesn't fix everything. 
And sure. sometimes, sometimes there's some blemishes and things that I need to I need to use uh, I need to use the frequency separation so I can get those uh, details taken out. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I try not. I'd to. love to see how you do. I'd love to see how you do frequency separation, but since you have an action, I guess there's no point. Um, no, the the action doesn't do it all for me. The action just sets it up for me. Um, I still have to go in and do all of it. Um, well, let me see if I can I can uh, uh, zoom in on her here. Find something that that needs. I mean, I'm sure there's nothing needs to be changed, but just as an example, I can always go back to the original. Um, <laughs> yeah, let me let me flatten this it's so we're not looking at uh, dodge and burn at the same time here um frequency separation i i tried this four times <laughs> fourth time was a charm um i finally figured it out uh i mean this is over years of working on it i now have it comes up with two layers one of them is for detail and it says right here um, use the clone stamp and the second one is the colors layer and it says use the mixer brush I thought I was the only one that uses the mixer brush, but I was in another group the other day and I showed them that and they said, yeah, we all do it that way. And, oh, okay. I thought I invented it, <laughs> but no. Okay, so with this, it automatically chooses the, the uh, um, clone stamp for me and everything. So I'm ready to, to take out uh, uh, blemishes. Let me take some spots off of her here. Everybody has spots. Um, all right, let's hit the option key, pick that skin and put it here. Now, in her case, she has a few little stretch marks down here. Which, you know, it's, it's pretty normal. Can pick skin uh, skin texture from up here, and I can put it down here and take those out. Now I can't get too close because the other the other layer actually will make this kind of bluish. You see, it almost got a little bit of that already. Um, but uh, but yeah. So if you want somebody to be absolutely perfect, I see there's still some little spots on her face there. I can uh, I can take those out. Whoever's in the bathroom should mute their uh, microphone. <laughs> okay, does that make sense on the on the uh, frequency separation? It does. Thanks for showing us. The 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 other thing that it's really good for the, the the other side of frequency separation is the color mixer, um, and especially if she had tan lines here, uh, I could fix those very easily. You can go to the mixer brush and use the color the color uh, um, one here, and uh, let's see. I want to pick it a color that's close to what I'm working with here. I can, I don't know if you'll be able to see it if I do it there, just let me try and find something. Okay, here on her knee, see the little bit of a differences in color? Mm -hmm. If I wanted to like make that all look kind of smooth, it might look weird here, but it'll it'll make the point. Okay, I can, I can brush up and down here and see how that went away. I can't make it not well. I can make it not not happen. Um, there it's back again, and there it's gone. You see how I flattened all of this out pretty much? Let me do it again. I'm gonna actually start up here, so it's there we go. Okay, so I took I took all of that. Uh, um, a little bit of knobbiness of the knees out by just uh, using the mixer brush. The mixer brush did not change the texture. It only changed the color underneath the texture. 
So that's good. Let me go with a, a lighter color up here and I'll scoop down a little. There we go. So if when you get really good at it, you can actually do a little bit of dodge and burn by dragging some light into the dark or dark into the light. Um, I can give you those uh, that action if you want to play with it. So now I'm going to do dodge and burn. Dodge and burn is my favorite thing to do because it lets me actually um, be an artist. I don't know why it's saying that. Oh, I picked the wrong thing. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, so I, I usually start with the hair and wherever there's a cur curl, like curling over like that, light usually hits it a certain way and you can just run lines across it like that. Um, the ladies spend extra money to get their hair highlighted. You can do it for free. Just make some areas light, some areas dark, and the whole idea is doing it that way. Now, I always, with the lips, I always go down here. And let me zoom in so you can see better. I always go back and forth in here, make it this so the, the light is bouncing off of the lips, the curve of the lip there. Even if it's not, um, I mean, this isn't real glossy. And I do do it there too. Now, if her mm -hmm. eyes were closed, I would put a stripe right here of light uh, to make the curve of the eyeball under the eyelid show up as round. Um, and it it it's day and night. It's it's a huge difference on how the face looks when you do that. Um, and the other thing to to understand about uh, eyes when you're working with them is see the highlights in her eyes, little white spots. Um, those are extremely important. If, if there weren't highlights in the eyes, um, uh, she would look dead, yeah, really, really dead. Um, I learned from, a, from a, uh, a cartoonist how important those are. On a cartoon, you've got, what, two and a half minutes to love some of the characters, hate some of the characters, know who the good guys and bad guys are, the whole works. You need to know that in the first few seconds. And they do that with highlights. Bad guys don't have any highlights in their eyes. There's nothing. Um, the, the good guys have highlights, nice ones. And their eyes are usually a little bit bigger. The, the bad guys have little slits for eyes mostly, um, but the eyes are bigger. And then there's the sidekick. The, the, the one that everybody loves, right? Olaf or whatever. I mean, the cartoons that have sidekicks, they not only have highlights in their eyes, but they've got whole window cells and their eyes are huge. And their eyes are huge that so you can see these big window cells, which there may not be a window anywhere around, but they still have a window cell there because they, the bigger the highlight, the more alive that they are. Uh, I had somebody send me a picture once that had a girl sitting on a rock at night and it was a shot of her and it was all dark around her and the photographer was really good and he sent, sent it to me and said there's something wrong I don't know what it is and I looked at it one look and it's like oh highlights in the eyes and he wrote back immediately I can't believe I missed that so um it's it's like super important all right, so let's uh, do some more dodge and burn here. I got the upper face part. I'm gonna add a little light to her neck. Down here. Sometimes you can play games and you can actually put light where there wasn't light. Like if I want it to be colder in the room, I can do that. And it's colder in the room. There you go.
And you guys pipe up with any kind of questions you have. It's, you know, I'm here for that. So you're saying you're actually gonna be doing this once a week or every other week? Every other week, yeah. <clears throat> um, again, I said I'm a big fan and I, I truly believe uh, your true work comes out of the picture itself. Uh, right now you're just, you know, making it, enhancing it a little bit better. Um, I do have loved some of your pictures uh, so much that I actually saved them in my phone so that I can keep it as, uh, you know, for future references. Uh, Inspiration. I've got yeah. thousands, thousands of pictures that I've collected from mm -hmm. all kinds of people. So that's not unusual. And I'm honored. But uh, so, yeah, you almost need that because, you know, it's like, okay, what are we going to do? And then when you go to, have you, have you done any shoots that you use those pictures? Uh, no, not really, because I mostly do photography as a hobby. Uh, so I normally just do photography outside. I notice you are more of a studio photographer, which I would love to uh, jump into that kind of photography. Um, but I would love to, like, if we were to have the possibility to choose one picture so that you can redo it and uh, show us the final product. Sure. Uh, I, I would love to like to see the full editing on a picture. You know, the funny thing is if we do that and you give me a picture that I've already edited, it's not going to look the same when I edit it again. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That it's happens the, to me all the time. It's going to look a little different, but um, that would be, that would be fun. I would actually get a kick out of doing that. Um, Cause I just enjoy the editing part. Now, the thing is, um, I'm, I'm a big believer in people coming up with uh, a style. That's the, you know, if you're looking through pictures on the net or whatever, and you come across one and you go, oh, that's one of Joe's, or oh, that's one of Mary's, um, and you don't even see the name, you just know, um, yeah. that's a style. I mean, that means that person has, you know, made it to that point where they have a style. It takes, it's extremely style. rare to do that in a couple of months, but I've seen people do it. Um, generally, it takes a couple of years for that to show up. <laughs> but there's some, there's some, uh, um, there's some very specific things. I'm burning now, um, the dark around the face. I always like that. Um, I learned about style by doing lighting and I, I would rent my studio to um, the people and I would, I would light it for them, to light their pictures for them. Mostly because I didn't want to mess them with my lights, but um, <laughs> they, they would then post the pictures and I looked at it and went, it looks like one of mine because I, had, <laughs> I wasn't doing a lot of post-production or anything at the time, but the lighting was my style of lighting. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of people that have their own. I mean, just about anybody I've seen that has a style that I follow, that I love, um, they use the same lighting all the time. Some of them, it's exactly the same lighting all the time. But, mm -hmm. but it's okay because, well, that's their lighting, but it's half of their style or, or a good portion of it to start with. Then you go beyond that. This is when I realized, well, if, if I can light other people and light other people's shots and then those shots look like they're mine then they could easily light them look like they're mine too so, oh somebody asked a question i'll get to the chat in a second um i don't know that i can see them that's the problem um no i i, I see it here um so what, what was that at here oh so I realized that the next stage of uh, having a style is in the editing. And editing, um, nobody would actually want to look like someone else. They can love a dozen different people out there, love that guys who work for this and this gals who work for this, all that. And that's cool. And all of that is going to add to your own style because the things that you love and the things that you hate are all mixed up in your in your artistic eye, and uh, it'll be your style, and you'll you'll love 
what you've done and it's your style because you are you and mm -hmm. everything that happens to you the movie you watched last week um you know uh your high school love uh the car accident that you were in everything changes your outlook on life and that changes your what you see in art so that that's just me i think but um uh, it makes perfect sense because uh what you're saying for, i mean i mentioned it at the very beginning your picture just looks awesome from the very beginning it doesn't need much post-production uh and then i can tell it's most likely the lightning that you're using on it that makes it so so great well thanks yeah well it's to me it doesn't seem like anything special but I do remember the time that I would be um, nervous before a shoot because, because I didn't know, is this, is this gonna work? Am I gonna screw up? Um, it, it's, it's, it's tricky because you're the captain of the ship. Um, everything that happens to that shoot, it's, it's on you. Um, mm -hmm. But after a while, it's like, well, it's worked the last 42 times. It'll probably work this time too. <laughs> so what you'll find is when you go to use those pictures for inspiration, um, uh, you're going to find that uh, you're going to look at one and go, okay, I want something that looks like this. And then you figure out the lighting that's going to do what you want it to do and all that. And then that'll be the last time in the shoot that you look at that because you'll be on a flow at that point. And you'll come up with, now let's try this. Now let's try it that way. And, and you won't have a picture it looks like the original one that you looked at to get inspired by, it'll be better than that picture. And um, I think it's, it's, uh, it's almost like jumping into a pool. Once you, uh, once you get over that cold, cold snap, um, you're good, you know, and you won't have, uh, um, you won't, you won't, unless you go, oh, I don't know what we can do next. Then you can go look at my pictures, but, um, Let's see, I need to find the chats. Oh, it's up here. Oh, oh there we go. Oh, good question. Um, Gary, he's asking, uh, I don't know if everybody can see it. He's asking if I use uh, up here at Midtones. Uh, as far as my dodge and burn, I've never used anything else. <laughs> it's just been mid-tones um, and it did the job that I wanted. So I've never changed it. I, I think mid-tones is probably how, uh, how it defaults. Um, uh, I should probably play with it. Uh, someday I will and go, what the heck? How did I miss this? I did that with the mixer brush for years. I was using, um, I, 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 I was using Photoshop and uh, one day, somehow, I think I decided to learn some more tools and I discovered the mixer brush. And, this is phenomenal. I can clean the floor with it. I can do this and that. And it made me mad that it had been there all along. I was hoping it was a brand new thing. Yeah, it might be a contrast thing. I would think mid-tones would probably be less contrasty. Uh, having, having different layers makes a big difference. Um, when it comes to uh, uh, you know being able to change the the opacity of the layers, so if you get a little too hot, um, you can you can cool it off. Okay, I'm going to give her a little background here, and I'm going to let that background get on her a little, and it's going to be a. Uh, what's really funny is this background I use a lot. I mean a lot. It's just a red splotch. It's black around the, uh, around the edges. See how it changes the whole mood of the thing, um, and I can get close to her. Now I'm I'm masking with gray, not with uh, not with white or black, and I don't care if a little bit of it gets on her because that would be reflection off the wall behind her. Um, so that would uh, that would be normal. I mean, I would think it would be normal. I'm going to go a lot darker 
and just go around the outside edges. And that's going to bring the, uh, the black from the original picture. And I usually leave, um, leave it lighter around the model because it's about the model. It's not about the background. Um, now here's the difference. There's the background and there's the background with the model in it. Now, if I wanted to go even further, I could go all the way to black and go around the outside edges here and really darken it. I actually kind of like it without that. Maybe a little bit. So there we go. We'll go with this. It's awesome. Okay. And uh, and again, if I wanted to add a floor, I can do that. Um, got a whole bunch. Of Dave, what gallery are you looking through right there? Is that is that um, Adobe Stock or what is that? No, no. Can you afford an Adobe Stock? If you can afford Adobe Stock, can I borrow some money? <laughs> <laughs> no and no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> I use Pixabay, P-I-X-A-B-A-Y. Um, okay. I've used a, you, you can see some of these are called Dollar Club. Uh, I was a member of Dollar Club for a while. I paid $10 a month, I think it was, and I could have unlimited downloads or something. It was really pretty awesome. Um, and I no, it was $10 a month. It was 10, uh, 10 downloads a week or it was some number like that that was quite, uh, uh, quite normal. But um, when it comes to the backgrounds, let me blow these up a little so people can see them better. Uh, I've got uh, almost 2,000 um, that I've collected over the years. Um, and some of them, uh, if, you, if you look at enough of my work, you're going to go, oh, there's that window. <laughs> or there's that dark bedroom. Um, I use the same ones for an awful lot of stuff. But some of them, these right here, see these two? Those, I was sitting in the dentist's office and they had can lights in the ceiling and it was showing up on this textured wallpaper in such a cool way. I was, fortunately, I was the only one in the waiting room because I'm taking pictures of their wall. And those are now backgrounds. I use them all the time in stuff. Um, some of these that you see, I got when I was on vacation in, uh, in England and Ireland couple summers ago. Um, this right here is the roof of, of uh, one of the British museums, I believe. I've used that a couple of times, even recently. Um, so always have your cell phone handy. Most people do. And if you see something and go, you know, that was, these are, I took at a beach. Um, Seal, Seal Rock, I think was the beach I got that from. And it's like, wow, the way the sun was reflecting off the water and all that, that's pretty awesome. And then it doesn't have to be just like that. Um, uh, for instance, if I wanted to uh, uh, put a background in that was, that was just colors, this, let, let's take this one. I'm going to um, take the background off that I already added to this one, take the mask and toss it. And I'm going to take the background. I'm going to cut and toss it in the trash. Okay, now it's just her, right? I'm going to take this one. Okay, it's really detailed, right? There's lots of colors, but it's detailed. And I'm going to put it in her background. But watch what I do to it. I'm going to actually flip it here because I make it the, the right size and put the light in the, at the top. There we go. Now that's actually, if I zoom in on it, that's a canvas and it's, somebody's painted those colors on there. But that's not what I want for the background. So I'm gonna say okay to that. And then I'm gonna just come up here and go to Gaussian Blur. I don't know why it doesn't have a button of its own. Everybody always goes to the same one. Um, all right, beach ball, stop spinning, thank you. I can blur that big time. Now let's put her at the top. And 
we'll paint her in with a bit of the gray here. And there we go. So don't look at any kind of backgrounds you have. Don't look at them as, um, oh, well, that is a ship or that is the ocean. It's like you blur that and you can be, it can be all kinds of cool things for you. So, um, you know, keep that in mind. All you need is patterns and, and uh, stuff like that. And, and it'll, it'll look pretty cool. And you can collect your own. Um, on Pixabay, I've got one that a ton of people have downloaded. And the interesting thing is my wife took the picture. And what it was is we were on our way home. It was a very rare kind of day because it was actually raining out. Uh, she looked up at the roof, um, at the, at the uh, sunroof, and there was water beating up on it. And we had stopped at a, at a light. Well, she pointed her phone up there and took a picture of it. And there's all these beautiful beads of water, um, very well spaced and perfect. I uploaded it to Pixabay and it's been downloaded 3,000 times for people who wanted drop, droplets of water. It's like, okay. And that was us going home from someone. Um, it's pretty awesome. All right. Notice I, I, you know, we put this, this background in, which is uh, completely different. I mean, changed the mood totally. Um, but I also, I made sure that her face didn't have any on it, but her hair has a little bit of it on it. That's because it, you know, in her arm here, if she was there, you would see that. That makes her natural. This is why I don't cut them out and paste them into something else most of the time. Um, because they just, they look like they belong there. Uh, I don't have to do a lot of extra work to, to you know, make it work. Of course, your background has to be the right kind of coloration and all. I spun this around specifically to be darker over here and lighter over here because it's behind her and there's a little light on her arm and hair and it kind of makes more sense. Um, so you kind of have to be cognizant of that. So, so there you go. That's, uh, that's pretty much, I don't do a whole lot more on editing. Um, now, when I'm done with this, I can save it. I'm going to flatten the layers first. I do more in Lightroom when I'm done. So I'm going to save this. Go to Lightroom. That's not Lightroom. There it is. Okay. And I just have to remember where I where it was here, it should be lit up. Hmm. Well, maybe I can just show on this one. This right here, for instance, you notice in, in the development, these aren't straight up and down. I've tweaked them a little bit. I changed the highlights or changed the shadows after the fact. Now, all of these can be done in Lightroom or in Photoshop um, with adjustment layers and things like that. It's just easier to do right here. Uh, and I'm sorry, I, that, that must have come from a, uh, a different uh, catalog because I don't see the original one. So it didn't save it. So it didn't save it here. Yeah, it is a different catalog. This one is in the same catalog. So let me save that one and I'll show you. I keep all of my work. Each each shoot is in its own catalog. See, I'd done one like that before. But she wasn't looking over her shoulder. Okay, so there's, come on, keep up. 
No, there we go. Okay, so there's the one I just finished. Okay, it's basically this one. See, okay, the background's in it now. All right, now from here, I will turn around and play with the highlights and things yet again. And I might even go in and change the temperature. Make it cold or warm. And uh, dehaze is kind of fun. Dehaze is, is light contrast, but not. Um, I'm not exactly sure what it does, uh, except that you can see it. It, uh, it kind of darkens the edges. I mean, if I go all the way this way and this way, you can see there it's real hazy looking. So I guess it's dehazing. If One this thing is, go ahead. Oh no, I was just gonna point out dehaze is, is a new one that they added recently, right? And it's, it's really nice, but I noticed that it also turns your photo from warm to a little bit more cold. Uh huh. It did that on my photos a lot. I don't know if that's something, if it's just me or what, but that's just yeah. a little thing I noticed about that one that I thought I'd point out. I've actually had it do the other, other direction. It kind of really? turns, turns them orange. And it's like, okay, gotta, gotta tweak this one. Yeah. You know, it's, it's bad. Okay, so this doesn't look a lot like what I saved. Okay, so that, that last thing, sometimes it's like, it's the fonts. Hey, it's fine. Uh, and, but most of the time it's like, it's not, hey, it's fine. It's like, I need to touch this to make it mine. So, so I'll tweak things. And sometimes they all end up back at zero. And it's like, okay, it, uh, it really did look that way. Um, so, so yeah, just, uh, um, it's a little sad in that respect. I don't like just changing levels and of something and having it, uh, and calling it art, but the dodge and burn is kind of fun. That's real artistic because you're actually painting. And now that I have this tablet, I'm actually painting on the model, which is pretty awesome. Uh, I've completely fallen in love with this, um, I gave away my two 32 inch monitors to my grandkids because I just do this now. So, and if anybody does go to this, this uh, XP pen kind of thing, or well, there's a lot of competitors too. Wacom has them, but they're all two grand more. Um, just make sure you run the brightness way, way down on it. Uh, I'm running the brightness at 20%. I, I never have monitors down this low. But after, after two days, I almost went blind. It was glaring at me. And um, my mother would be so upset because I'm, you know, a few inches from the screen. <laughs> so, but uh, well worth it. Love it. But a friend of mine um, who I kind of grew up in photography with in the last 10 years, he got one, didn't like it, sent it back. So fortunately, that was uh, an option for him. So I guess we've been going for over an hour. Anybody have any more questions? I got to go watch Star Trek. It's a new one out tonight. <laughs> uh, I probably will text you um, the picture that I would like uh, for okay. you to redo it again and see the final product. If you might want to do that one time, I would be really interested in. Sure. Uh, thank, you. thank you so much. I really appreciate you having the time, you know, taking your time to do this. Um, of course. Because it's, it's really, really inspirational. Well, thank you for joining us. Hey, Dave, thanks. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot, Dave. Dave, can I ask you a question? Absolutely. Uh, Photoshop and Lightroom. Of course, I, I start off with Lightroom, then I go into Photoshop. Mm -hmm. What is the real difference between the two? I, I mean. Well, Lightroom is more of a, to me, its main reason uh, is workflow. Um, I mentioned that any shoot that I do has its own catalog. And I do that to make sure that all of the pictures are in the same folder with everything else that goes on with that shoot. Right. Then the folder has the name of the model and the date and all that. So it's really, really easy for me to find my stuff. Um, that's the main reason I use Lightroom. Now, the fact that 
Um, I flip between the two because it's there's a lot of things you can't do in Lightroom that you can do in Photoshop. Right. Those, those are the things I do in Photoshop. You can almost look at Photoshop uh, as being a filter on Lightroom. Um, you know, I'll tweak everything a little bit in Lightroom first, then I'll go to Photoshop, edit it with um, the actions and the dodge and burn and all of those things that you can right. do in Lightroom. And then when I save it, it puts it right back in the same catalog down the line, right next to the original one. And, and I'll do the last minute tweaking, uh, which is a lot easier to do in Lightroom than Photoshop. Um, and, uh, and then I'm done. So really, if they could find a way to put it all in the same, same program, that'd be great. But they both do have their distinct uh, reason. A lot of people just use Lightroom. When yeah, I, I have a. I I just put right away into Lightroom, and I, I have my you know thing one two three. I do the stuff, and then which is fairly simple, and then I run it back into Photoshop, and well, that's where I do my major work. That's uh, that's about what I do. So, which doesn't we're both probably screwing up. Um, like I said, like I said, just because we're doing it doesn't make it right, but it's right for us. And that's it. You know. That's that's all that's important. You know, the end result is like, there you go. This is a tool that we need a hole here. OK, going to use a shovel to do that. Um, back holes are even better. But one more question. Uh, yeah. Can we if, can can you can I set up something with you on a private session the way we're doing it now on the computer, you know, back and forth? Oh, sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm going to give you a call probably during the you know, next week. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. yeah. yeah I'd love to come out. I'd love to come out to Tempe. But uh, that was my college. I was supposed to go to ASU years ago, of course, but my uh, parents wouldn't let me go. Yeah. I actually worked for the city of Tempe for 22 years. <laughs> so yeah. I know it well. Yeah, this, I think it's probably going to be summer or fall before a lot of uh, flying around and I'm not going to have any classes until at least fall. Of course, when I was going to go to ASU, in fact, it's in my high school yearbook, the school I was going to, uh, it wasn't really a college even. So you can imagine how many years ago we're talking. It was pretty, it was there, <laughs> but you know. Well, I'll discuss with you. Anyway, I'm going to give you a call. Thank you for the session. It was wonderful. Oh, thank you it was for, wonderful. Uh, for joining us. All right, thank you. Gary, I'm going to text here in the meeting. Yeah, we do use the Y setup. Um, I can't, I, I'm using it, so it's, yeah, this gives you an idea of the quality. I'm not using the microphone in it. Um, let me switch, let me switch. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing. That way I can get down here and change my camera. Okay, now I'm, now I'm on the built-in camera so I can show you the one I was using. This is a little wise camera, it's 20 bucks. High resolution, speaker, well the speaker and the microphone kind of suck. The thing is, there's a, there's a version, I don't know about version one, this is version two, this is a version three. Do not get the three. This one has the ability um, to be hacked because this is just a standard web, uh, not a webcam, it's a security camera kind of thing. You can look out on your phone and see what's going on. They're really awesome. I've got them everywhere. I look paranoid. I have some of them. And I got five more coming. Um, but this one, the company themselves say, oh, here's some software you can run if you want to, if you want to make it a webcam. And you put the software on the chip, uh, on the memory chip, you plug that in the bottom and you turn it on and it becomes a webcam for $20. Okay, it's awesome. Um, I like it. Anyway. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a wise fan. Now they have everything, you know, scales and vacuums and all kinds of stuff. But, uh, um, but yeah, I'm a, I'm a, let me switch it back here. I'm a pretty big fan of um, 
There we go. Yeah, their their products. They're good, they're reliable, I've never had anything fail. So um, I'm glad you enjoyed the session. It, it was fun. It gave me something to do. So any other questions? No, most people have taken off. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, uh, I, uh, I had a blast. All right. Y'all have a good one. And uh, I'm going to, this, this session will be recorded and I'll put it on YouTube or something. So uh, anybody wants to see it again. All right. Stay safe, all. <laughs>